Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. In-person church services are slowly coming back to normal. Time is running out on the historic Hope train station. A Chilliwack mom with a special needs son is stuck in a bed bug infested in apartment. And the Chilliwack Chiefs are going to hit the ice for a short season. Our special guest this week, as we mentioned, the Chilliwack Chiefs, their vice president, Barry Douglas. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Just in time for Passover, the provincial health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, will allow outdoor religious services for up to 10 people. Indoor services are on the horizon, and those details are expected by the start of April and perhaps in time for Easter. It's not clear if this will appease critics who have taken legal action against Dr. Henry and the province for their COVID health restrictions on in-person worship. While Chilliwack enjoys a renaissance of its history with the downtown renaissance called District 1881, the District of Hope is embroiled in a controversy over some of its heritage. The old Hope train station built back in 1916 was scheduled for demolition. Its condition was such that the city fathers felt they really didn't have a choice but to tear it down and build something new on what is considered prime real estate. The group Save the Hope train station has lobbied that the building be repurposed as a tourism center. The BC Ombudsman has now stepped in to see if the district was in their right to tear down the old building. Now, the demolition is part of a settlement between the district and the owners of the land, which happens to be the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. There is one last push to salvage that building. It's a demonstration coming up this Saturday. The Ombudsman will... The Ombudsman's stay of demolition ends next Monday, March the 22nd. Now, speaking of trains and rail, expect delays at rail crossings in Chilliwack starting April the 1st. It is the annual CN Rail Annual Vegetation Management Program. It's basically to clear away grass and vegetation from the rail right-of-way. And still with spring cleaning, the city of Chilliwack has put out a reminder for what you can and cannot put in your green card. In addition to your green card, residents of the city of the city's curbside collection program can place up to 10 paper bags of yard waste or bundles of branches at the curb each week year round. A few weeks ago, we introduced you to the Unique Get Together Society. It is a resource for youth and adults dealing with anxiety and autism, and it's located in the Pacific Autism Network office. That's on Yale Road downtown. One of the advocates is trying to help one of their clients, a mom with a son who has special needs. Their William Street apartment is infested with bed bugs. The landlord is trying to raise the rent, although the province has extended the COVID-related rent freeze to the end of the year. The family and others in that building are fighting that rent increase. The landlord has shown to media receipts for extermination bills, but has shown little proof as to why the rent should be increased. The UGTS continues to fight for this mom who, ironically, is now living in a hotel. And being a privately owned residence, by the way, there is very little that off officers and offices like Fraser Health can do, let alone the MLA, who is Dan Coulter. Recently, there has been renewed concern about ATV activity at Gill Bar and other sensitive ecosystems. The continuing concern is the damage done to fish stocks and the environment in general. There has been a call for a moratorium of ATVs on any gravel bar. Sadly, there have been cases where DFO warning signs asking drivers to be careful have been vandalized. The Watershed Watch Salmon Society and the group Chilliwack Citizens for Change are now asking for a moratorium banning ATVs and uh, from the sandbar in an effort to save fish stocks. Better weather means more people at the river and more people fishing, so what do you do when, with that cut fishing line? Dumping it in the river or off the bank is really not an option. The Chilliwack Vetter River Cleanup Society, along with the City of Chilliwack and Freshwater Fishery Society, and now have fishing line receptacles as part of their recycling program. Their Facebook page has all the details. 
A cybersecurity incident with Molson Coors raising red flags for the beer company. No clear word on how extensive this attack was or is. The chief communications and corporate affairs officer, Adam Collins, released a statement to Chill TV, but didn't mention the Chilliwack Brewery outright, but simply said Molson Coors experienced a systems outage that was caused by a cybersecurity incident. We've engaged into a leading forensic IT firm to assist in our investigation and to find out what happened. Public art projects are always controversial, and Chilliwack Council felt the heat this week. This past Tuesday, Council was supposed to approve $60,000 for an art piece to sit at five corners in front of the Chilliwack Business Center. Entitled Mecha at the Five, it was supposed to be a lit gathering place featuring a First Nations piece of art, some berries, and a fish. And in the number five, Council put out the original request for proposals back in January and went through the process of a short list. Well, they're not going to spend the $60,000 just yet. It's gone back to staff for further study. But Council did spend $12,000 for some metal birds that will be somehow attached to the clock across the street at Five Corners. Chill TV Sports, we will have a hockey season. The BCHL hammering out an agreement with the Provincial Health Officer for a short season. It'll start in April after a quarantine. The Vice President for the Chiefs, Barry Douglas, will join Chill TV in just a moment with an interview, and we will talk about how this is all going to look. Meanwhile, the Valley Huskers holding their EGM. That was last week. They remain hopeful there will be a football season later this year. The president of the Huskers, Tom Calverly, telling Chill TV that the BCFC president, Tyler McLaren, was in attendance. He passed along what is going on both for the conference as well as Canadian junior football in general. Optimism is the key word here, although everyone is aware that changes could come at any time. And now our interview with the Chilliwack Chiefs Vice President, Barry Douglas. Chill TV's News of the Week and in conversation with Barry Douglas, Vice President of Business Operations and a BCHL Governor. Barry, uh, I guess right now you're breathing a little bit easier. We really do have... I never thought we were going to say this. We have a hockey season. Well, uh, what What's the parameters now? We have a pod situation, but it's not five or six teams? Yeah, so news to our ears, obviously. And uh, we do have uh, uh, three teams in our in our pod. And there'll be five pods across uh, the BCHL uh, landscape. Obviously, Wenatchee had to take the year off because of the border situation. But we will have, uh, and with Langley opting out, we'll have 16 teams in operation in, in this year's uh, BCHL pod season. Just a sidebar, uh, there was a report that came out that Wenatchee was looking at maybe going to, to ironically, Quinnell, because it was Quinnell that moved to Chilliwack. Was that a serious motion, or was that uh, a whim and, and a Christmas tree wish? In, in the early process of uh, the Return to Play Task Force, we were looking at every single option we could to try to find a place for Wenatchee and, and a way for Wenatchee to play. So yes, Cornell was looked at, and they have a new facility up there, and Cornell uh, could be potentially be a, a BCHL uh, town one day again, but just in this circumstance, just with the travel and the cost and everything else, just, it just didn't work out this year. All right, back to the Chilliwack Coliseum. Will we have in-person attendance of some sort for these games? Uh, sadly, the answer is no, but uh, happily, the answer is we'll have uh, every single game on, on hockey TV, so f fans can watch uh, those games uh, live, uh, broadcasted from the Chilliwack Coliseum. Uh, but you never know with with the uh, health authorities if uh, you know some of this gets loosened up. You never know; we could have fans at the back half of our season. We've got uh, hockey TV. Any radio coming down the pipe? I know that uh, junior hockey right across the country, uh, a, a lot of radio has been pulled back because of cutbacks. Um, anything on the, on the horizon? for the Chiefs or it's strictly uh, hockey TV right now? Well for this pod season definitely it'll be hockey TV but there's no secret we'd love to be on the air again uh, we'd love to be uh, on the airwaves here in Chilliwack so if we can make that happen sometime in the future we would love to make that happen. One of the uh, concerns from critics was provincial money being used uh, every numbers like nine and a half million were being floated around for the BC Hockey League uh, was that in case the number and is some of that trickling down to the Chiefs? 
Good question. So we haven't received word yet on our provincial funding request. Uh, there is still uh, a joint submission between ourselves and the, and the Western Hockey League. We put in uh, a request for funding and we still don't have an answer yet, but um, we have been told they are getting hopefully close to having an answer for us and then shortly we should have an answer on what funding and if and what funding we'll have. The, the Chilliwack Chiefs, since the move from Quinnell uh, via Glenn Ringdahl back to Chilliwack, Chilliwack has always been fairly financially stable. There are other teams that are community owned. Uh, anybody that is in really rough shape that we don't know if they'll make it to the next season, you got an expansion team in Cranbrook that hasn't even played a game. Yeah, that's uh, Cranbrook. We really uh, were happy to get those uh, those that team back on the ice as it was their expansion year. Obviously, um, after this pandemic, we'll be doing a lot of uh, you know close look at the budgets across the BCHL. But right now, uh, besides as I mentioned earlier, Langley opting out. Everyone else has opted in into this pod season, and then we'll reevaluate uh, once we come to the middle of May when, when this season's over. But um, you know, fortunately with ourselves, Chilliwack, we have great ownership with the Keith, the Bond, and the Hasselman family, so we're really blessed here in Chilliwack. One of the other criticisms that uh, popped up uh, on social media and it was a it was a blanket term for junior hockey in general is that everybody is owned by a wealthy millionaire um, and we have community owned teams do you want to address that I mean yes Chilliwack is is fairly stable but you have the merits you have trail and uh, you have these other teams yeah, so uh, you know, Merritt uh, as well as Prince George, Powell River, all community owned, and they're doing a great job for themselves right now. I mean, you know, Merritt will be in our pod, and uh, that's hats off to their their group of their board of directors who are making that happen. And P Prince George being financially, uh, you know, stable as well with their home show lottery, and Powell River does a great job behind the scenes of ensuring that they have everything they need for their players. So, you know, I think private or public owned right now, both team, both organizations are doing pretty well across the league. Is there the uh, crossing the fingers that we have a Fred Page Cup? We're not going to have a national championship. That that seems to have been taken off the table. Uh, but is is the hope that in, at the end of April, March, or April, May, when the season is over, whatever the season is going to be, how many games now? We're looking at in that 20-ish uh, game uh, range. We actually had a call this morning with our chief medical officer and our schedules are being fi finalized the next couple days. So we're looking at that 20 game range. And then for the playoffs, uh, there won't be a, a Fred Page Cup per se, but uh, we are looking at some other options that perhaps having a, you know, a little tournament at the end if we're able to do that with the health uh, authorities. So basically we stay tuned. Stay tuned is exactly the way to say it right now. Barry Douglas, Vice President of Business Operations uh, with the Chilliwack Chiefs, Governor to the BC Hockey league uh, you can breathe a little easier now it's a great mock 10 we see at the office right now we're going full speed but we're loving every second of it thanks barry and you're watching chill tv's news of the week Chill TV weather, last weekend was the time change to daylight saving time. This Saturday, the first day of spring. The days are longer and typically uh, wetter. Yeah, we've got rain this weekend and the highs of 12. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd like to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.